Okay, I'm coming on again uh, post-election to give you my thoughts on what I think has been going on. And we've heard from several psychics now that Joe Biden, Merrick Garland, Jack Smith, along with the governors of this great nation, are going to do everything they can do to prevent Mr. T from ever entering the White House. Now, what they're saying publicly is that they're, you know, uh, willing to take every legal avenue and, uh, you know, they're saying they're couching things in terms that are very polite still. Um, but Linda G reported, and she probably got it from a pretty relevant news source, that Joe had a meeting with legal authorities to discuss what presidential immunity actually meant. And that when he was done with that meeting, he was euphoric. He was grinning from ear to ear. And he did an interview afterwards in which his energy was literally, she described it as dancing with joy. So I think that that is Joe Biden actually investigating what kind of power he can wield in the face of this very alarming, very upsetting so-called election result. I don't accept that it is the real result, but I do accept that the rest of the world has seen it as the result, and that's what scares me. Um, you may have noticed um, I changed my YouTube banner, and I put a little um, thumbnail on this video that says La Résistance. So I know it's not our country. I know it's the French flag. I'm very well aware of that. Thank you very much. You don't have to comment on that. I'm using that because I don't know what else to call it. We're all going to get into some good trouble here. And we're doing it in the name of trying to save our country. And I think that's very much what's at stake here. So let me tell you what I knew, know so far. Um, there were just a few people arrested around tampering ballots leading up to and on the day of the election. Not enough to really matter. We also heard that there was voting machine tampering via Linda G from a person who was an expert on hacking. And I'm hoping that the alphabet authorities will take it from there. But actually, I'm hoping that the alphabet authorities already knew that there was that sort of tampering going on because we've been hearing f for these last few years that they were all over the idea of um, election fraud and tampering. Um, so they better, they better be, that better be true. Um, and I feel that uh, Mr. T will not be prevented from being seated as pres president due to voter tampering. I feel he will be prevented from being president because he is a traitor and a felon. He has met with Viktor Orban and Bibi Netanyahu since being out of the White House. And he's had several, I think they said up to seven phone calls with Vladimir Putin. That's a no-no. When you are not a head of state, it's basically illegal for you to have meetings with other heads of state unless you happen to show up at the same gala. So he should never have done that. Now, Biden is due to have a meeting with Mr. T this Wednesday, November 13th. And now Marianne of Revealing Light has said that between now and January 20th, Mr. T is going to tell Biden to step aside so that he can just take over as president. And of course, Biden will not do so. But the fact that Mr. T would even suggest this is seems, I mean, for her to predict this seems ludicrous, right? But I... I agree with her. I think he will do this. In fact, I think he will do this at this meeting on Wednesday. And I think that this will precipitate Biden's resolve to do everything in his power to keep T out of the White House. I think this means that Biden may have to stop the transfer of power. Forget about whether it's peaceful or not. He's just going to outright have to stop it. Now, one of the things that I have alluded to in other um, other videos, I think, well, I'll say it here now, is that I think the whole coming forward of Kamala Harris and conceding very politely and the, uh, um, the announcement by Biden of his support of a tr peaceful transfer of power, I think these are smoke screens. I honestly do. And I think even the governors saying, you know, yeah, we're going to fight you at the state level and everything, but they're not coming out and saying, you know, over my dead body, do you get into the White House? They're not saying things like that because 
they want to keep up the appearance of just kind of going along with the program. I think that the media outlets are also going along with the program. I think that's why major media, I mean, they, their feet are in the fire. They cannot come out and say that they think this thing is, is stolen. I think I've checked most of the news sources that I look at and then some of the more traditional ones. And although their headlines allude to possible stolen election or fraudulent voting, all the articles go all the way around the mulberry bush and come back to, no, it's fine. We have a very safe election process in place. So we can't really blame them. Like I said, their feet are to the fire. They're all owned by Trump-loving Republican or even MAGA um, people. And so they can't, they can't step out of line now. They really feel uh, maybe in danger because Trump has said, you know, he wants to close, he wants to take away licenses from the major networks. He wants to, he wants to close down a lot of media outlets. He wants to, you know, jail and in some cases even unalive some journalists. And it's just, it's, we're all on tinterhooks. And for those of you in the light workers community, be careful, you know, Project 2025 has a special little place dedicated to you, and it ain't pretty. You know, it's not saying that everything that we do is illegal. It's saying that there has to be an alignment with Christian Judaic values, Christian Judaic values, J I don't know, you know what I mean, with their, what they feel are traditional values and things that don't align with that are probably going to be shut down. So LGBTQ, anything to do with that, or if you are that and you're out, yeah, go back in the closet for now. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to say what I am, but you all know what I am. You see the symbol on the wall behind me. Um, I'm going to have to go back in the broom closet, you know, because... I don't want to see my videos, you know, uh, not only not monetized, but uh, prevented from being shown. You know, I worry about those things. So in the meantime, though, I'd like to talk about what we can do and what is being done to change the outcome of this election. I think that Joe Biden is on it. I think that heads of the alphabet agencies are on it. I got to trust that. I think that even poor old Merrick Garland <laughs> is on it. And um, I, I do think that we're in for a fight. I think it's kind of civil war energy. I mean, this is a civil war, really. But I think that there are good things coming. I had a vision of Kamala Harris a long time ago that she would be I actually saw her standing, um, it must have been the Rose Garden where I saw her, and in my mind was the message that she will be a beloved president. So I don't think that that's happening in 12 years. She'd be 72 by then. I think that's pretty soon. Just saying, that's my opinion. And this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, I also saw, had a vision of Joe Biden, and the steps that I saw him on were actually the steps to the Senate, which is interesting. They weren't, it wasn't at the White House. It was the steps of the Senate. It's like, and it was, it was almost like a photo shoot for him for like historical portrait or something, but they were hailing him as like the best president we've ever had the new father of the country, the man who saves democracy, and he saved us from so many things. But his work isn't done yet, and he's going to have to save us from this, and he knows it. You know, something that I love about astrology is that the way that they describe archetypes. And 
for Scorpio, which is him, there are three levels of Scorpio. There's the regular old level of Scorpio. And this is probably, you know, when people are younger in their lives and they haven't been through very much and they haven't suffered and had to learn lessons and things. And that Scorpio is obsessed with sex, obsessed with anything that they're even interested in. They're very good at doing like investigative work and research and things like that. But they also are very emotional, very emotional. And they like to have their way. They figure out your secrets and they usually use those secrets against you when it suits them. I mean, they can be your best friend for 20 years and then, then they might pull something out of the hat. So that's the first level of Scorpio and it is represented by that animal, the scorpion, which by the way, doesn't live in water, it lives in the desert. Weird that they got that uh, connection, but they did. I think maybe because of the traits of that particular animal. The second level of the scorpion is the eagle. And the eagle for most cultures represents a bird that is really steadfast and true, really hardworking, really um, really strong in what they do, but a fighter, a, a, such a strong fighter that they rarely have to fight because people just know by their visual presence that they shouldn't go up against this person. So the eagle represents somebody who can see society from a much higher vantage point. They see it from the vantage point of an eagle and eagles are known to have very good eyesight so when somebody uh, steps into the eagle phase of the Scorpio energy, this is where we get the non-corruptible cop, the non-corruptible politician, the person who's going to work their ass off for others, for the good of others, and will not take a bribe, will not say no, will not, you know, will, will not back down from a fight, but fights honestly. And yeah, they're Scorpio. They may fight dirty when pressed, but only when pressed, not as a traditional rule, not as their normal mode of fighting. So that level of Scorpio, I equate to like the Knights of the Realm, right? They're, they're really true hearted, really true hearted. And again, kind of obsessive about what they do, but that's a Scorpio trait all over. The Phoenix Scorpio. This is a Scorpio who has in their life um, been faced with difficult, difficult situations and overcome them. It could be extreme hardship, extreme poverty, an extreme illness, an extreme life situation and relationships, but they have overcome them. And as they overcome them, they realize that there's something in them that's different than other people. Or maybe they don't realize it until the situation is really over. But as Scorpios, they are really um, single-minded in their focus. They're very, very intense. They're passionate about what they're doing. And what they're doing is answering a higher calling. And so the Phoenix Scorpio always strives higher and higher in their life. They do usually have a strong connection to their faith and spirituality, and this drives them. They are still a Scorpio, you know, they can still keep a secret really well. They can still get secrets out of you really well. They can still use those secrets when they need to for their advantage. But their advantage is a, has a different attitude, a different perspective now once they're in that Phoenix phase because they are fighting for the good of mankind or the good of the world or the good of their country or the good of their family or the good of their partner or whatever. They're just a lot more selfless than they were when they were really young. Um, so it is really interesting to see this happening with Joe Biden. Obviously, he has had this kind of Phoenix nature in him for quite some time. And even him running for president against Trump when he did, you know, that was a Phoenix move. You know, I don't think there's anybody else who can win. Even him taking up the mantle the second time, he really truly believed that he was the one who could win. Not that he didn't think Kamala was ready. He didn't know if she could win or not. And so that's what he did. Now, the, the way that things all played out 
we can say this or that happened and that's why she didn't get the votes or whatever. And that's what they're playing out all over the news media right now. And that's what I'm saying is just kind of a, not a cover up. They, a lot of people don't know the difference. So a lot of people are just taking it as fact. Well, she didn't get the votes because she didn't appeal to enough Latino voters, for instance, or it was the thing about Gaza, right? And then you have just as many people saying it's not just one thing, it was everything. And I even heard people today saying that her she ran a great campaign for 2004 or 2008, but not for 2024. I disagree. I think she ran a flawless campaign. I think she came back at every step. I think that there was um, interference. I'm just going to say interference. I'm not going to say any of those other words. There was interference in what happened on November 5th, and that will come out maybe much later. I don't know. But I don't think that the discussion about what happened on November 5th is what will keep Mr. T out of the White House. I think the fact that he spoke to all those world leaders when he really shouldn't have is what will keep him out of the White House and the fact that he's a felon. I think also it might involve things having to do with the documents that he shared with these world leaders. That goes along with him talking to the world leaders. I think that's more the culprit, the, the, the hinge pin, the linchpin, excuse me, the linchpin that will kind of hang him out to dry. So that's what I wanted to say about that. The other thing that I wanted to say is that the group of people who are leading this, who are trying to make this happen or not happen, as the case may be, the group of people who are trying to make it happen are going to go down in history as well. Because it's going to take from now, probably for the next decade at least, to rewire, rework, reword, or, or add in amendments to our Constitution so that this never happens again. Simple things like you can't be a felon and be the President of the United States, that's a no-brainer. Of course we will put something like that into the Constitutional, probably in a Constitutional Amendment, right? But other things having to do with the behavior of someone when they're not in the White House, um, you know, for instance, talking to world leaders. But going back to this group of people, I think that Gavin Newsom is one of these people who is going to be really instrumental in um, helping to keep Mr. T out of the White House. I think Jamie Raskin is going to be really instrumental in this. I think a lot of the uh, governors, Tim Waltz probably, I mean, probably be a part of this too. But the, the list of people that I see as being really, really instrumental in keeping Trump out of the White House and the ones that I feel at this, at this point in time, we haven't seen um, their actions yet. We haven't seen what's gone on with them yet. And again, things change so much. But just from my vantage point here, I would say that uh, Jamie Raskin, Michael Ludig, Pete Buttigieg, Gavin Newsom, Kathy Hochul, uh, the governor of Illinois, Mr. Pritzker, uh, Jeffrey Holder, um, Lawrence Tribe, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Catherine Clark, um, I don't know his first name, Aguilar, and uh, Lou of uh, Congress. Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Patty Murray, uh, Chuck Schumer, Neil Katyal. I think these are the kinds of people that will put their brilliant minds together and come up with a way to prevent, and, and Joe Biden, of course, but they will all come up with a way to prevent this transition from happening. And like I said earlier in the video, will it be a peaceful transition? Maybe not super peaceful, I don't think there's going to be bloodshed. I think there's going to be more legal maneuvering going on than, than violence of any kind. 
because these people don't want violence. That just defies the whole purpose. So that's something that I wanted to say, and I really feel that the group of people who accomplish this will also get it in their minds to begin. And they've already tried to put in amendments and things that would prevent this from happening um, ever again. But this is the group that will become known as the new founding fathers of, of, the, of the country or the new, not federalists, that's kind of gotten a dirty, become kind of a dirty word, but there's, they'll be known as that core group that, you know, we had the founding fathers who wrote the Constitution, and then we had the, you know, James Madison who wrote all those wonderful papers, and then the amendments that came along, just a few of them. But this will be a group that brings about, and maybe they'll put it in more than one amendment, but whatever the next amendment is, it's going to cover a swath of all of these um, dirty dealings, all of this chicanery that Trump has engaged in to prevent that from being used to control the country ever again. Because he's already controlling the country, right? He's already, with his fear tactics, he's already got people afraid of doing things. Listen to what I just said a little while ago about you know, light workers having to kind of watch themselves and pull back and go back in the closet. He's already getting people to react in fear, which is horrible. So this Wednesday, we're going to be doing a revealing light, or not revealing light, that's Marianne's channel, a reveal the future. And in that show, I haven't quite settled on what we're going to be visualizing, but we're going to be visualizing something that's pretty good. And we're going to be putting out a lot of love and light and warmth and compassion for everybody who's feeling unsettled and not calm these days. So be sure to join us for that. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back real soon with actual card readings <laughs> or astrology or something like that. But I just wanted to put those things out there. And these thoughts are all coming from my guides and what they're telling me right now. So thank you and I'll see you later.